Hi, everybody. Mike Beer here with your DRF race of the day for Sunday, April 26th. We are going down to Oaklawn Park. Race number 10 will be the race of the day. Um, it's an allowance race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. They're going to sprint six furlongs on the main track. And let's take a look at this field. It's a, it's a big field. 14 are entered. Of course, only 12 um, can run in the race. So you're going to have to wait for scratches. I think it's important to wait for scratches um, in this race, let's just you know get to go there right off the bat because the 13 and the 14 who aren't in the race as of now, um, I think they're both horses you want to at least consider if uh, they get into this race. Even if one of them gets in or both um, of the two, um, I, I, I prefer the 14 Diamond Crazy um, if she gets in, and that's why personally I want to wait for scratch. If she's 15 to one on the line, I don't think she'll be that price if she gets in. But she's the horse that I would pick if she gets in, I think this is a great spot for, I really like her recent form. I don't want to spend too much time on those two horses because they're not in the race as of now, but just want to throw it out there right at the top. If the 14 diamond crazy gets in, um, she would be my top pick in the race. You can see that the uh, morning line favorite um, in this field is the number five in the midst of biz. Um, she's three to one on the line, sort of a lukewarm favorite. She's in good form right now. I'm not going to knock her. Um, she has good speed. Um, but she probably doesn't need the lead to be effective. Her recent form is solid, um, settled for second in her last two starts, but ran well um, in those two races. The second choice on the line, number 12, gold credit. Um, and she makes a lot of sense in this race as well for Phil D'Amato, turning back um, out of an effort. They tried to go longer with her last time, and she flattened out a little bit in that race. But her first start for D'Amato, two starts back, was actually pretty good, um, finishing third, sprinting. And I like the turn back for her. Um, we'll touch more on her again. Um, a little bit later. Let's um, start things off here by taking a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for the race. They are projecting a fast pace for this race. I can't really argue with that. There is plenty of speed in here. They have the eight Shyla Baby out there on the lead, and that's another thing that I just can't argue with. She's a fast horse. She likes to be out there on the front in her races. She's only one for 10 in her career right now. She did earn an 82 buyer speed figure when she posted that lone win of her career. That was last year um, at Churchill Downs. I think it's worth noting, though, that she earned that figure going five furlongs in a race that was rained off the turf. And other than that, while her form has actually been solid, um, she's blown several uh, leads in her races going six or longer. Um, so she has that to deal with. Um, she hasn't run in uh, over 150 days since last uh, November. That's another thing she has to deal with here. And if they force her to go fast early in this race, I just think there are a lot of things that sort of stack up against her in this spot. She's eight to one on the line. If she goes off at around that price, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to um, argue with anybody who likes her. I do think she can make the lead in here. I, she just wasn't my kind of horse. Um, the number five, the horse that we already touched on, the morning line favorite in the midst of biz is also projected to be up close. Obviously, a fast pace wouldn't help her either. Um, but she's a contender in here. Again, I'm just you know, I'm not a huge fan of in the midst of biz. I know that she can win this race. I just she's just not the kind of horse I would want to um, be betting on as the favorite. And I do think there there is a real chance. Um, that she could be favored in this race. So I was going to avoid the two horses that the pace projector have out in front. Let's just touch on some of the other contenders in the race here real quick, because it is a big field. Um, the number one is clickbait. Um, there are some things to, to recommend about clickbait. Obviously, she's um, only run twice in her career. She won both of those races. She comes in here at two for two, um, defeated a very weak field um, at Canterbury in her debut last summer, but she won that race very easily and very impressively. And then she came back in her second start um, and did this. We have a replay of her second career win. They stepped her up, you know, logically into a, an allowance race. And once again, you know, she had speed, but she was just content to sit off the pace early and track the leaders. Um, she rolled up on them through the turn to challenge, and she was just much the best. You can see her confidently ridden um, for much of the race, just pushed clear at the end. This was going six and a half for her longs. She is returning from um, a layoff of over 220 days in the spot. She is facing... Um, a tougher field than she's ever faced before. This is There are no stars in this race. It's not like she's found herself in an impossible spot, but it is a tougher race. Um, I think you have to you know, respect the fact that she's very lightly raced. Um, she has good tactical speed, so it's not like if they go fast in front of her, it's supposed to really affect her. We'll see how that all plays out. I can see her being um, a contender in this race. I don't love her. Um, I wouldn't take too short a price on her, but I can see her you know, taking the step forward that she needs to take um, and being a real factor in this race. Let's uh, move to the outside here. Um, number 10 is another lightly raced four-year-old. This one for Steve Asmussen, uh, shocking fast. And she's another horse who I think is a contender in this race. Only four starts so far. She began her career in California for Baffert. You know, she didn't run great in either of those two starts, but then she got a layoff. They turned her over to Asmussen for this meet earlier um, here uh, at Oakland Park in February, and she won. First off, this is her first start 
for Steve Asmussen, what a replay of that race. Broke a bit awkwardly in this race, but she had speed. She got right up there uh, to the front in the race. Took some pressure from a long shot around the turn, but had no trouble holding that. And then she just, I like the way she finished this race off. You can see her kicking clear at the end. She earned a 69 buyer for this effort. I thought she ran fine. And in her last start, they tried to stretch her out in distance. And, you know, maybe at this stage of her career anyway, she's just not a horse who wants to go that far. Her trip was fine in that race after getting bumped at the start, um, going that mile. Um, she was in contention um, up the back stretch and just really lacked any kind of punch in that race. Got tired in the stretch, finished fourth, beaten over eight lengths. But I, I'm not going to really hold that race against her. I like her cutting back in this race. I respect that she has upside for Asmussen. And she's a great price on the line. I think there were a lot of things to like about Shocking Fast. Um, she is a horse that, you know, I would certainly um, be looking to use in this race, along with uh, the 12 gold credit, um, who we touched on briefly at the Open uh, for Phil D'Amato. I just think she makes a lot of sense in here. She won her career debut um, as a two-year-old back at the end of, uh, of, that, of that meet at, at, in October at Keeneland. And then after that, it was three straight stakes races. Um, when they finally dropped her in class, she bumped into Kofefe. Then she caught a sloppy track. And then her three-year-old campaign was over in June. Um, since she's come back this year, I think she has taken a step forward. Um, her last two starts have been for D'Amato. Um, they sprinted her um, back in February. I, I thought she ran pretty well in that race. Got a clean trip, but always chasing, basically, um, Sunnydale in that race. Sunnydale is going to be running in a stakes race on Saturday, so we'll see how she does. Um, and then again, you know, much like uh, Shocking Fast, they tried to stretch her out last time. She was in that same race uh, with Shocking Fast. And, you know, they, they raided her early. They didn't want to go towards the front with her. They raided her. She made a run around the turn, couldn't really reach contention and finished sort of an even third. Another horse who I just really like turning back in this race, Phil D'Amato, has great numbers over the past five years. Route to sprint on dirt. He's 32 for 116. That's 28% wins. The ROI is a big $2.46. So he gets these horses to uh, perform. I, th I think Gold Credit um, turning back in this race it is a good move for, for her. Um, She's 7-2 on the line, which, you know, isn't a great price, but it's not terrible either because I think she makes a lot of sense. And I would be using her as well. Um, once again, you know, um, we can put the picks up there. I did put the 14 on top, and we'll see if she gets in. If she doesn't get in, though, um, I will scratch into the number two as my top pick. Super Wonder Girl. She's 10-1 to one on the line. Um, began her career on synthetic. Did win one of those races. But she's run well since they switched her to dirt late last year for two starts. Um, she ran well in both of those races, her first two dirt starts of her career. She finished second both times, but I thought she ran well. In particular, um, the, the uh, season finale in October at Keeneland, they went seven furlongs there. And she got wired by Waterfox, another horse who's in a stakes race here on Saturday. Um, Waterfox just really had control of that pace, didn't have to go fast. And Super Wonder Girl, you know, raided early, uh, made a three-wide move. I thought she finished very gamely gaining ground on that horse uh, to be a gaining second at the end. She got a long layoff after that. Um, she came back um, over this track um, on April 4th. It was sloppy. She was off the pace early. She made a, an early bid around the turn, you know, coming about four wide into range of the leaders there. And then she got tired to the stretch. I'm not going to hold that race against her. First of all, I thought that was a much better field than this one. Um, the winner of that race could actually turn out to be pretty good. That's a Bill Mott Judmon horse, Cardamon, who, who actually ran pretty well winning that. I thought Super Wonder Girl showed enough, and it was first off the layoff that I would just give her a chance here, you know, second time back to maybe show the necessary improvement. I don't think she has to improve by a lot to beat this field, but I think it's in her to do that. She feels like the kind of person who really could be a good price in this race. If the pace is fast, um, it probably works to her advantage as, as well. So I, I did put the 14 on top, um, but if she doesn't get into the race, I'll be happy to take a shot with Super Wonder Girl. My picks for the 10th race um, at Oaklawn Park on Sunday, it's the race of the day. My picks are 14, 12, and 10, and if uh, the approximate post time of that race is 5.38 Central Time. Good luck.